Good evening, Mark Capitona, Colonial Power, um, 5 Mount Royal Ave, Marlboro, Marlboro Mass, 01752. Tonight we're here to talk to you about um, an add-on to the town's uh, municipal aggregation program, which um, just so you should know, um, I, 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 Wendell has the best municipal aggregation rate in the state as far as rates go. Just so that you're aware of that, there isn't anyone that has a rate in the eights, and um, Wendell's rate is at uh, eight seven three nine. That that happens to be the uh, kind of the, the low bar, if you will, which is fantastic for Wendell. Uh, it also comes with 100% national wind. Um, all of that being said, what we're looking to do is uh, what I what I think is a wonderful little add-on to your program. Um, it's to help out the low-income community, uh, the low-income customer. In, uh, in Wendell. So all we're looking to, uh, for the aggregation to do is be facilitator for some low income uh, community uh, solar discounts. So we're going to facilitate, we're going to use the SMART program. That is um, the next generation of um, the Department of Energy Resources solar program. And what we're going to do is have new additionality or new solar built, and we're going to deliver that energy to the low income customer, if you will, in the form of a two cent discount. Um, what does it require the town to do? Not too much. There's a couple of contracts um, that we've already sent over, and I think Nancy has them. And, and what does it say? It just says that the first one's an MOU. That's a, a memorandum of understanding. That's just a contract between you and the solar developer saying that you'll take this discount for the next 20 years and deliver it to your low income customer in Wendell. That's, that's it, that's just what it does. The next contract simply is an ASA between the city or the town of Wendell, the solar developer and Colonial saying, Colonial is gonna facilitate all of these discounts on everyone's bill. So more good news, the, the end user, what does it mean to them, to the customer that's a low income customer? The good news is it doesn't come with any contract, doesn't come with any hooks, they can leave the program at any time. They're not required to stay in it. Um, they can come back to the program at any time. So um, if, if they were to leave and come back, that's not a problem. They'll still get that discount as long as, as long as they're an R2 customer. What does that require the town to do? Absolutely nothing. The utility tells us who the low income customers are. They qualify them. And that, that's how we meet the regulation under SMART that we're delivering to this customer class under the SMART regulations. Anyone that's a designated R2. Um, other than that, th that's truly the, the gist of the program, you know, from 20,000 feet. I'm happy to get into the minutia, but I don't want to bore you with it. I, I do need to make one, <laughs> I need to make one, um, one other little note. Back in December, the Department of uh, Public Utilities, yeah, the city of Boston signed up for this exact same program. Uh, and they got a cease and desist order on marketing the program. We're in the process of working through that. We hope to have that worked out within the next, uh, hopefully, few weeks. And we're all going to be able to move forward if, if the town so desires. But I just wanted to let you know that little gray cloud, uh, it, what they're saying is they want us to come back in with the town's plan and refile saying that it's that you can participate as a low-income community solar plan. When we don't believe that's necessary, you didn't need to go back in when you chose 100% national wind. You also don't need to go back in when you choose use the low income community solar pro program. This is on your on your regular product, you know, so on our from our standpoint, we're not certain that they fully understand the program. If, if they did, unfortunately, they didn't ask any questions, they didn't do any discovery. So hopefully, uh, shortly, we'll have that resolved that we can all move forward. And Denise, did I, I'm just trying to think if I missed anything here. But I think that's, I think, it. yep, I think you covered everything. So I can turn it back to you and just if anyone has questions, I know I turn a lot of information, but basically 20,000 feet, solar developer builds something, delivers a discount for 20 years. And I should mention that. That's what we're saying. Because it's solar, we have to sign up for 20 years so that we get the discount. Otherwise, they're not allowed to build. Okay. Well, thank you very much for that brief presentation. We appreciate this short and sweet summary. <laughs> okay. It's not something we get all the time. <laughs> But uh, it does sound almost too good to be true to me, for one. Um, uh, and I think we probably will discuss it as a board, uh, especially when we get our third member back. 
But uh, for the time being, I can say it sounds good to me and I don't have any questions, but maybe Lori does. Yes, I have a couple of questions. Please. Um, so first, just what you were talking about that happened with Boston is just to clarify, is that the DPU requirement? Because I had heard that they are asked, they are requiring that this get reapproved or reapproved as an amended so, uh, plan or something. That's correct. So two details. Colonial received a predetermination letter on our plan that I just described to you by the Department of Energy Resources. They're the ones who run SMART. R different organization. The Department of Public Utilities, or DPU, that regulates municipal aggregation, they're the ones that issued the letter in Boston. We believe erroneously, without some a little bit of background knowledge, would have helped. But I think we're going to get there. You know, I, I know everyone wants to work to get this to go. It's just a matter of the, the, the gears of... Uh, uh, you know, state government moves slowly. And is that something that would require more input from the town or is that something you guys handle all on your end? We would handle it all on our end. We don't, we don't assume, and the only reason, Lori, we expect most communities that we've spoken to moving forward with this process. So we would literally inundate the department with another 80 filings for, for not really any reason. So it really doesn't, doesn't make a lot of sense, you know? Okay. So, and um, so are all, all right, so are these solar arrays already built or are they, are, are they in line to be built? Yeah, yeah, they're in line to be built. Your, your contract helps them get the financing, right? They then say, we have a town that is willing to take this off take. We can move on to our financing step and, and, and so forth. We think that if the town was to move swiftly, this. 20 megawatts out in National Grid right now that could be delivered late late summer, early fall at this point. And do we have any information on sort of how big and where they are? Because there has been, you know, we've had some, a lot of talk about not really, um, you know, being less supportive of clear cut forest land being used for solar. So is there any way for us to know or have any control over where these are built? Uh, um, so it, just given the size, and I, I want to apologize, I don't know, Denise, do you know exactly how many uh, low-income customers in Wendell we should uh, have? That I, yeah, there's about 40, Mark. So believe it or not, that's probably, just so you know, Lori, it's probably going to be a rooftop because at 40, oh, really? yeah, at 40, it's about a third of a megawatt. And this certainly wouldn't be a, a clear cut um, situation, but I, I, I don't want to say definitively because we could put Wendell together with Orange and Warwick and New Salem. And, you know, then we might be somewhere where it could be something. But if if you're saying to me, hey, Mark, I would prefer that ours is not part of that. We can certainly work within your, you know, your kind of your parameters there. Okay. And um, so I originally I had thought that it was going to cover all the residents and only the low income would get the discount. But now it sounds like every single off taker of these arrays are going to be low income and they're going to get the discount. Is that correct? That, that's correct. The discount will go, I, I'm just making up a number. Maybe there's a, 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 a 120 customers in Wendell. 40 of them might be low income. I'm, again, I'm, I'm probably off there, but those 40 customers, rather than paying, and this is going to sound, this is the beauty of this program. So rather than paying the eight, seven that everyone in Wendell's paying, they'll pay 6.7 cents for the supply. And then after that, they'll get 36% off the total bill for that, for the, you know, they'll still get the national grid discount. So it's going to be substantial in Wendell. You know, right, this, right. They, they would be just, it would be fantastic. I guess the reason I ask that is because um, um, I think I understand that to get the, so these solar companies who are, like this idea who are you know making this happen um they like having low income off takers because they get a night they get a very good incentive through the smart program um correct which is much bigger than the two cents right but i obviously they probably need that incentive to make it all work out financially um but i also understand that they only need to have 50 percent is that correct of off takers that are low income so i guess I'm, I just would, it would be, make me feel better about it if, you know, everybody who's 
getting the off who's off taking from this this program is going to be getting that discount in terms of it's the the incentive that the state is putting out there to encourage this it's all going to the the people who who need it the most you know yeah and Lori, so with our program j just so you know it's very difficult for a solar developer not to give us 100 percent. and just let me explain so on ours there's not going to be any customer confusion we're going to lower the rate and then deliver that discount so let's say the other 50 percent is out there and it could be you're exactly correct on your read of smart but they're going to have to work with a competitive supplier there as well for that other 50 percent to lower their rate and so forth so almost everyone exclusively is giving us 100% of their power just because it's not, a, it's not an AOBC. They can't just go, um, uh, you know, it, it kind of spot it yes. everywhere. It, it, it can't be an AOBC there and a discount of energy here. It's going to all be discount energy. So it makes things more difficult for the low-income customer, excuse me, for the low-income uh, solar developer to go in another direction. Okay. Okay. All right. I think that might be all my questions. Thank and, you. <laughs> you're, you're more than welcome. <laughs> and I know we were um, swift on this, but I, I just want to be respectful of everyone's time. If, if, if you mention it to Nancy and you have more questions, we're happy to come back in front of the board and answer any questions that might not have been done or an email with Nancy and so forth. Good. Great. We appreciate that. Okay. Nancy, did you have any questions? Nope, I've, I've heard the spiel a couple of times. I think I get it. And uh, I think that Mark and Denise have done a, a really great job for the town um, in getting us to this point. Yeah, good. Okay, well, thank you, Mark and Denise, for showing up. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. You enjoy your night. Thank you. Thank Have you. a good night. Thank you. Night. Bye. I know. Oh, that was short and sweet. Okay. Good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so Brian McHugh isn't coming in for a few minutes, I don't think, unless he's there. Um, no, I don't. My don't screen is not working, so I'm just on the phone. Oh, okay. Uh, so we can, we can move on. Um, when I wrote this agenda, I hadn't gotten your final draft of the select board's annual report, so I think we're all set with that. Uh, sounds like everybody has made the changes they wanted to make, and, uh, You've sent me the final draft. Is that true? I think that's right. Yep. Okay. So we'll get going on that. So then we got an email from um, Ward Smith that I think you all got a copy of asking to have the Conservation Commission appointed as special municipal employees. Um, in his case, he has in the middle of some um, work that he's doing and he he does not want to run afoul of the conflict of interest laws, and in order to do that, he would need to be made a special municipal employee. So I did look back in our archives. Um, in 2011, the Council on Aging were made special municipal employees. Uh, in 2012, the library trustees, and then last May, the board of assessors. So this is something that I think the select board has routinely been willing to do. It's hard sometimes in small towns uh, to have qualified people serve both the town and on the boards. Um, so that's his pitch. He would like to be able to do that. So I'm putting it in front of you. Sounds good to me. What do you think, Lori? I think it's fine. Um, did you, I, I think we talked about this, Nancy. Did he call the ethics or was he going to call them to just double check that this was what um, was needed? I, I don't know if he did, but, but we did have, um, we had a similar situation in New Salem recently where she did call the ethics board, um, somebody on the board of health to see if she could get paid as the um, public health nurse for COVID. And they did say if she was made a special municipal employee, that that would be fine. Um, yeah, I don't so think we can any, certainly. I don't think there's any real downside to making them a special municipal employees. I had to do that when I became a constable posting the warrants uh, back in the day that we did it physically. Um, yeah. And it, it really protects, it's a good protection against anyone stepping forward with a conflict charge, conflict of interest, because it does prevent that completely. And uh, 
those charges of conflict have been used uh, for various reasons and sometimes without foundation. So it's pretty right. helpful. And he has also, yeah, he's indicated he would recuse himself from any voter comment on the projects at Conservation Commission hearings. Right. And and that he does not intend to conduct other wetlands work in town, but he wanted to finish up the two projects that he had started. Hmm. Okay. And, is and it with, for the, just with special him? municipal employees. Sorry. No, you have to make the entire board special municipal. It's not the person, it's the position. Okay. And it can be revoked at any time. I mean, you can, you know, vote this week to make them special municipal employees and you can vote next week to revoke the status of every special municipal employee in town. Okay. <laughs> what power? <laughs> and, and just so you know, because your select board members in towns of under 10,000, the select board is all automatically special municipal employees. So you can go to work for the town if you want. Oh, very good. Privileges. <laughs> the privileges of high office. There you go. Such power. Well, in that case, I will move that we make the Conservation Commission uh, special municipal employees. I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That takes okay. care of that one. All right. Um, the next thing on here was just a brief note. I'm sure you all saw the note from uh, Senator Comerford's office that the bill has been filed to authorize people 16 and 17 years of age or older to vote in town elections in Wendell. So it's been refiled from last year, um, and we can follow it along. Great. Good. And Brian has okay. shown up, Nancy, and Kate. I don't know if we should still wait for the time on the agenda or... We can yeah, go. normally we do um, the time on the agenda. In yeah, case we, we can. wants to be part of the discussion. Yeah, okay. We, we can do that. We see you there, um, Brian, and so, we're for uh, seven thirty. Thank you. Okay. So I'm sure you recall that every year we have to adopt a recycled product purchasing policy so that we can qualify to get DEP grants for. Um, through the Solid Waste Management District. So we had gotten an email asking us to do that again, and then uh, Jan re-emailed us to say that DEP has changed the standards, and they now require um, content about what she calls closing the loop and more direct language than just referencing the buy recycle policy. So I, I had just gotten this, and I haven't had a chance to update it, but if you would, uh, she has sample language um, that talks about completing the recycling policy by purchasing products made with recycled material. Uh, and I think not just paper, but toilet paper, paper towels, plastic trash bags. Um, and they're encouraging you next time you place an order with a vendor, you're encouraged to ask for products containing recycled content. Uh, so if you're okay with me changing the language on that, I'll have that ready for you to sign um, either tomorrow or in a couple of weeks, depending on if I can get this together or not. Sounds before you good. come in. Sounds good. And so is this something that we've definitely been doing and it doesn't create any hardship in terms of getting these kind of products, Nancy? Um, no. So the, the policy that we've adopted every year, um, they're saying all purchases of paper products not limited to, but including copy paper, stationary envelopes, notepads, and file folders shall meet a minimum of 30% post-consumer recycled content to meet the current state and federal standards. A decision not to procure recycled paper products shall be based solely on a determination that the items are not available at a reasonable time period or that the items fail to meet reasonable performance standards or are only available at unreasonable prices. Um, so, I mean, this has been in effect in Wendell for, I don't know, years, 15 right. years, maybe, maybe longer. Um, and so every few years we re-sign this policy and then every year we send it out to everybody reminding them that we have it. Okay. I think that they're just trying to expand it now to other things. I mean, there's nobody's going to come in and, you know, check that our paper is recycled, but I have been actually ordering it through uh, the Solid Waste Management District, and we get recycled paper through them. Um, I, I was actually... I can check with the custodian. Wondering if that might be the reason for the um, the mailing issue, the newsletter mailing. If no, that was an issue at the... Um, no, we've always used the recycled paper. He just wants heavier paper, and I'm, I, we may still be able to get that. I'm going to check with actually Jan to see if she's, you know, if we can get anything 
heavier so that it won't jam up his machines. Okay. Um, okay. Good. But that's, you know, again, if, if we can't, then we'll have to get it for that and we won't mm -hmm. be breaking our policy because it's just, you know, there are outs. Um, right. Right. Okay. And it, if we can't do it. Okay. So, um, Next thing, Lori, you said people had gone to measure the town hall windows for window quilts, and they had determined that the windows are really in too bad a shape yep. to do that. So I did mention to um, Doug Tanner, you know, that this is an upcoming issue, and he was hoping maybe at some point we can get a grant or something, because I would imagine that those windows are going to be rather pricey. Yeah, they're big. Um, yeah. To replace, they're big. How easy is oh, it to, wanna... to get a, a quote or, or um, an estimate? Well, that's easy enough. Um, yeah. You Who mean... put in those windows last time, Dan? Do you know? Or I'm thinking maybe it was Tom, Jason. Okay. I mean, we can certainly check with somebody like Tom. We can go to window places. Um, you know, we can um... check with bigger companies, too. Because this, you know, this all came up at the Energy Committee because we wanted to do the window quilts. So, of course, we still have $6,000 in that grant, but I, it's not, to me, that probably won't cover a whole lot of those windows. No. <laughs> do you guys have any no. idea what it might be? Um, <clears throat> That's probably two windows. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Something like that. How so, many windows are there over there? Uh, There's just four, I think. I'm five, just four on that one side, or is there... There's, I think there's three on one side and one on the other. And one on the other, okay. Um, okay. But there's also that rehab money um, and another Green Communities grant coming up at the end of this year, um, which we could think about applying. I mean, windows, they always say, aren't the best in terms of the, they don't have a, the payback that is normally required to, to get the grant. Mm -hmm. But if the town mm -hmm. has a big enough match mm -hmm. to make the payback good enough, then that, then we could maybe get some grant money through green communities. Okay. Um, and as I recall, all we have to do is, is vote that meeting, that money out at town meeting, right? From the rehab fund. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, we could, we could also just opt to do it all with rehab if we just want to do it quicker than the whole grant, that particular grant cycle. Um, wouldn't, we wouldn't get any money probably till the beginning of next year. But um, I don't know. I was also wondering about historic grants, but maybe that are, I wasn't able to look up whether we're on the state registry for historic places, which I know there's grants for that. Um, I don't know, have you ever, do you remember if there's ever any uh, grants. I, I think family. that um, that the, the all the town center is on is eligible for historic grants. The problem with mass historic grants, and they they only come out, you know, I, once a year or once every couple of years. It's a certain time period, and I don't know when it is. Um, I think the last one we got was um, f for the library from Rosie, uh, and that was. I'm not even sure where that one's. And I think the meeting house has gotten one. I know we've gotten some in New Salem. Um, and, and Wendell maintains its buildings very well, so maybe it's not as big an issue. Uh, in New Salem, I had... Once you get these grants, then you're agreeing to maintain the building in perpetuity or giving back the money. There's, right. there's kind of strings attached to them. And I'm not saying it's a you know a bad thing altogether. I think you just have to be careful. And if we had rehab money and we had enough, that might be a better choice. Plus, I don't know when the grant is going to be available, and it's pretty competitive. Um, I think that they look at buildings that are in danger of, you know, um, being torn down or right, or being right. lost um, somehow, which this is obviously not. Right. Um, okay. But anyway, we we can look at that. Well, I guess the next maybe step we can get some quotes. Yeah, get some quotes sometime before the town meeting and see how much rehab money we have and if it will fit in there and um, we can go from there. Do you, uh, do you want to work on quotes, Nancy? I could do sure. it. Sure. Yeah, maybe. Or, or we, yeah, either way would work. 
we'd have to get some measurements, obviously. Um, and yeah. We have lots of measurements. I mean, <laughs> we have measurements in our audit from way back, and then Jonathan and Don made new measurements as best they could when we were yeah. looking at the window quilt. So, yeah, I would, that would be helpful that, for whoever does them. Seems like somebody might want to come out and look, but maybe they don't. Maybe it's easy enough just to send measurements. So I'll make sure you guys get those. Good. I'm sure they'd want to come out and look, but I think in in whatever documentation you give them to give us a quote, um, we'd have to have something to start with. Yeah. Okay. So the next thing, um, Veterans Memorial, I think we briefly touched on this last year at town meeting. Um, I think the group that wanted to up redo that memorial, and I wanted to say it was like $5,000 they were looking for uh, with the pandemic and the financial situation. I think they agreed to the $500 and that they were going to do some fundraising. And then, of course, nothing has happened because nobody's doing anything, and that $500 is still sitting there um, unused. Um, and I don't know of any fundraising that's gone on, so I'm not really sure where we stand with that. I can talk to them about that, Nancy, and see where they, where they want to go with it. Okay. Because I don't want to, you know, come having the budget all done and then having them come in and want more money. I'm trying to get everything right. on time this year. I think it probably would okay. make sense to uh, to add another seven five or seven hundred dollars to that at the at the next town meeting, but we'll see what people want. Okay. Very good. And I, I also have to look, I don't know if that $500 was part of the overall large budget um, article or if it had a separate line. Mm, um, don't know. If it was part of the article four, then we can't carry it forward. Um, right. If it had a separate line, then then we could, and then we could add to it. Um, I almost think we might've done it as at the special because we forgot about it for the yeah, annual. Yeah. I think that's right. Okay, so it's at the special, so that would be better. An article, probably. Okay, good. Okay, um, so June twelfth, um, I've sent out the word. Everybody is good with that as a date. So if you want to etch it in stone on your calendars. Okay. We're good with that. Yep. All right. Good for fair um, weather. So, yep. So on um, March twenty second. We have okayed with the select board, New Salem select board, for you guys to attend their Zoom meeting about the town coordinator position. Right. So I have actually written up um, an advertisement, and just so you can start thinking about things, um, I think we need to decide when we're going to advertise, where we're going to advertise. We have to start talking about um, budget so that the town's each know how much additional money they'll need, how much overlap training you want, um, you know, what, what the starting salary is going to be, whether it's going to have to go up um, to attract more people. I don't know, but those are things that we need to think about. Um, and then uh, what parts of the contracts, the sample contracts are appealing to you. Um, you take a look at those and I know, I know I got some feedback from one of the select board members in New Salem saying he liked the orange contract because it was fairly short, but there were things from the other ones that he might want to include. So that's the kind of stuff um, I'm interested in talking about on the 22nd. Sounds um, good. Yeah. And then good. on the, 30, the 31st of this month, too, we have a money managers meeting um, trying to get Tom Scanlon to come in and talk about the audit and then the assessors. I'm sure you've seen their email uh, regarding budgeting questions. They would also like to have some time at that meeting to talk about that. And that's all I have unless, and we're almost up to 7.30, we can talk to Brian. Yep, that sounds good. Brian, you still there? Looks like you're still there. You're probably muted. Can you unmute yourself? All right. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's not a mute problem. It's like I have to switch my, whether it comes through the same system or the microphone or something. Anyway, here I am. So thanks for coming. Thank you for having me, everybody. 
Uh, if you don't know me, I'm Brian McHugh, the Director of Community Development at the Franklin County Housing Authority. Uh, I'm here tonight to talk about the, um, the FY19 Community Development Block Grant that was awarded to the town um, back in 2019. Uh, the, the town signed a contract with the Department of Housing and Community Development. It was a three-year contract which runs through um, June of 2022. Uh, but there's an implementation period uh, of 18 months, um, and then you get some. You, there are sort of built-in um, extensions on that up to the, up to the three-year period. We should not hit the three-year period. Um, the the uh, 18 month uh, implementation period went through December 31st, um, but DHCD, which is Department of Housing and Community Development, automatically extended every one of the FY19 grants across the state because everyone had uh, basically been um, delayed in implementing their their programs because of the pandemic so we didn't have to go through an extension process at that point but right now we're, so that got extended through 331 um so we're looking you know they give out extensions in three month peer, uh, increments so right now we're looking to um to submit or having you submit uh an extension through uh, june 30th of 2021 i'm sorry and um, it's it's likely that there'll be another extension beyond that. Right now, we've um, you know the unit goal for that uh, for that um, program was uh, 18 units within um, between Wendell and Shutesbury. Right now, we've completed 10 housing rehab units. Nine are under construction. There are three more people that are in the application stage, and some other applications that have been sent out. So. Um, when those projects are finally put out to bid and, and constructed, we're going to be going into the summer months, I'm sure. So we'll have to most likely extend it again. Um, so in the, the original grant was had six hundred and ninety thousand dollars in housing rehab funds for this for the project. Uh, we did have to um, put in some of the program income, it's called, which is from paybacks from previous loans into the grant. Wendell had sixty nine thousand dollars had to be put into it. And Shutesbury had about twenty-four thousand dollars, so ninety thousand dollars was put on top of the, of this, um, the six eighty, six ninety. So we have about seven hundred eighty thousand dollars total for the for the rehab, you know, for housing rehab. Um, and again, well, you know, we've already um, hit our goal of eighteen units. We typically exceed that goal because some projects don't go up to the maximum amount available, which is forty thousand dollars per unit. So we're able to to address some other people. Um, and uh, in, we'll probably hit about 25, um, 25 households within the two towns when, when it's all said. Um, so uh, that's that's pretty much it, right? That's a, the, sort of the status uh, report right now of it. Oh, I did want to bring up that, as you recall, we did um, uh, ask to reallocate some of the housing rehab funds into the broadband drop program, um, $30,000. They got reallocated to that. It's sitting there, it stalled out. Um, we didn't have people, we didn't get any applications. We sent out a few um, and it's unfortunate, but sometimes that happens. Um, I know you, you folks had had originally, we were gonna, we were gonna um, uh, give up to $1,200, it was right originally, and then it went up to $1,600 per drop. Yeah, um, yeah. And so, um, so people didn't have to borrow money, you know, maybe, I don't know, I'm not sure how, you know, exactly what happened uh, if they just didn't want to, you know, there was a, the drop didn't cost as much or, or what it was. Um, but that $30,000 is sitting there. And at some point we're going to, I'm going to come before you and propose that that $30,000 gets put back into the housing rehab program so that we can do another household. Right. Um, so that'll, that should, you know, in the next month or so, I want to come before you and ask um, that 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 we do that, but it'll take um, it'll take a public hearing to do that. So um, we'll set that up um, and do the posting, the, the proper posting for it. And I'll let Nancy know when that's happening, um, so that you guys you're aware of it. So it'll have to be posted at the town hall, but we'll post it in, in the newspaper two weeks prior, then one week prior. So we'll we'll follow through on that. But I have a lot of meetings coming up in the next few months, so I have to sort of. Play, you know, lay this all out when I'm going to come back before you folks. But right now, you know, tonight I'm just talking about um, uh, looking for a vote to to um, sign an extension um, through uh, June 30th, 2021, for the FY19 CDBG grant um, that was awarded to the town. Okay, I so move. <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, okay, you move. Uh, All right. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. So we only have two members here tonight, Brian. Uh, okay. Uh, you'll have to be satisfied with a unanimous vote to extend. <laughs> right. <laughs> Okay, great. Well, thank you now, very much. Is Anything that else? something that Dan needs to sign? Is that that paperwork you sent? Yes, Brian? Sharon. Sharon should have sent it to you, Nancy. Um, there's a there's a form, and then there's a cover letter. So it's all it's all set to go. Um, so I don't know when Dan okay. can come in to sign it. I don't know what how that's. They say things tomorrow. It looks like it's just the form that he needs to sign, and not the cover letter. Or does he need to sign both? The should be a cover letter. Do you have the cover letter there in front of you? No, I just I just had the form, so let me see if I can find it. My computer is just not cooperating tonight. We would have sent it together. So, um, oh, you know what? Uh, I'll ask Sharon tomorrow. It may be that because DHCD is, has not been open since last March. They actually do not have not gone into the office, and they're all working remotely. So we've been doing a lot of this stuff, obviously, as everyone has um, electronically. So I actually. I think what it is that we just have to have you sign it and then we upload it into the into the grant management system that we work in online. So I'll follow up on that, Nancy, uh, and I'll, um, we'll email you tomorrow to let you know whether or not a cover letter is needed or not. OK. Yeah, and maybe I just didn't. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm thinking I'm that looking at her email and I'm not seeing any cover letter yeah. with this. but. I'm thinking that it is only the form and we upload it and it's, and that's the end of it. So um, if, if I'll, I'll let you know either way tomorrow. Okay. Very Sound good. good. Okay. Sounds good. good. Okay. Thanks everybody. Good to see Thank you. Thank you so much, Brian. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. So um, that's all I have at the moment. Um, Lori, did you have anything else? No, I don't think I do. Wow. It's going to be a <laughs> record breaker. Oh, I, just I, so I, you know, I did not have a chance to look at the minutes from Liam that I got today. So um, they may not be out to be signed yet. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I do have one small item, which is that uh, Cheryl Fox, our old friend, Cheryl Fox, who was once a Wendell resident um, is getting married on September 18th. And uh, presumably that's gonna happen at the meeting house. It maybe will be the first wedding at the meeting house. Uh, and of course, the, uh, all the improvements won't be there, but uh, there won't be bathrooms, but the inside will presumably be clean enough to have a wedding. And she's asked, um, uh, if they can possibly rent the town hall to be able to use the bathrooms there. And if they could possibly use the town common with the gazebo for part of their get together. And I wrote back and told her that the town hall is officially closed for the moment. And we'll just have to wait and see if it will be open then. But the town common presented a little more of a question mark in my mind um, I did ask her to contact Barbara Craddock to see what Barbara's thoughts on it were. But um, as far as I can remember, Nancy, we've given permission for people to use the town common uh, without a fee. Yes. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. So many, that's right. many people have used the town common. We don't charge for that. Right. And so I, I told her that she would need approval to use the town common for it, but there was probably no fee. I did mention that there would be no alcohol on the town common because it's town property. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to give everybody a heads up that she's she's applied for that, and we'll just have to see how things go. Okay. Yeah, I have had another inquiry about the town hall kitchen from somebody that was a regular user, and I said, you know, not not yet. And um, right, you know, she said, well, I'd clean it up. I said, no, you know, I don't think that's the issue. It's that if we open it for one person, we have to open it for everyone, and we're we're just not there yet. Right. Yeah, I'm afraid so. that's true. Yeah. Um, but hopefully, better days are coming. Yeah. 
Yeah, I can give you actually one other little thing, an update on the police succession committee is that uh, we're putting out an RFP for a consultant to help us figure out the contract between Levert and Wendell. Uh, and mainly this centers around uh, money, the amount that Wendell will, will pay for these services. And we're asking for a consultant to help us with that and to help structure the whole arrangement with perhaps arrangements for other towns entering the uh, cooperative agreement. And uh, Leverett has generously agreed to write the RFP, send them out to various consultants. We, we found three consultant firms that uh, would probably be good doing it. And uh, Leverett has about $5,000 left in their grant money uh, and so the idea being that we will start the consultant uh, with that money and then we're applying, uh, there's a good chance that we could apl uh, apply and get, according to the COG, a much larger grant to continue the study and wrap it up uh, hmm. and come out with a complete contract and an arrangement for other towns joining. So uh, Margie, McGinnis has agreed to write up those RFPs and and probably get consultants to meet with us at the next meeting. So that's cool. Zooming Thanks. ahead. Progress. Yeah. That's the update on that. Yeah, and I I think um, you know a lot of this is being complicated by the the um, police training bill that's moving forward too. Yeah, um, I'm just hearing little bits of it, but it sounds as though there's going to be extensive training required, even by officers in small towns. Right. And a conversation with Scott Minkler yesterday was saying, even if you know, even if they go through this part-time training, which is if they think they're going to allow this bridge training, they would then be considered trained police officers and unlikely to stay in small towns. It's, right. it's sort of a catch-22. Right. So we'll Big have to see how that goes. I mean, just have part-time officers. Well, well meaning, but it's difficult in small towns. Yeah. And um, I actually have an email from Scott um, that he received from the state or from somewhere outlining this new bridge training program, Laurie. And I will try to send that, remember to send that out Okay. Uh, to you, so you get an idea what it is. But I'm also going to, I've uh, been assigned by the police department to contact the Shrewsbury and uh, New Salem select boards and let them know about this, just to give them a warning that essentially what the state is doing is eliminating part time police officers. Hmm. Saying, you know, either you're full time and fully qualified or you're not a police officer. So it is a real challenge. And oh. Wendell was really lucky that it got on board with Leverett when it did, because otherwise we'd be in the same situation. Hmm. Very interesting. Yeah. Not a very helpful move on the part of Boston, I would say. Yeah. And I've heard, you know, it's really meaningless to big cities and towns because they're already trained in full time. This is means nothing to them, but it's it's quite difficult for small towns. It's gonna make towns eliminate their police departments, I think. Yeah. Which will yeah. put more pressure on the state police. I've heard they're trying to recruit three hundred and fifty new state police officers in anticipation of this becoming a problem. Really? Huh. So, so they want to take over, know. do they? I don't think they want to take over. I just think that they they see the writing on the wall that, <laughs> that if there's these little towns get rid of their police department, who are they going to call? Right. Yep. So, I think it's not over yet, but, you know, um, it's definitely something we're going to have to address at some point. Yeah, I wonder if it would be worth talking to our legislators about this or <clears throat> it's pretty much a fait accompli, isn't it, Nancy, at this point? I, I don't know. I, you know, I'm, I'm hearing different things. I'm hearing that it's, um, it is on one thing, and then I'm hearing from the New Salem police chief that 
you know, if they go through this training, which isn't as extensive, even though they don't work full time, they would be full time qualified. And um, I, I don't know. It's very confusing. Yeah. Well, I will check on that and see if it might be worth um, trying to contact our legislators for some relief. Yeah, at least have somebody. Ex I, I would like to have somebody explain it to us that doesn't have skin in the game, somebody that's not already a police officer. I'd like to have somebody else explain it. So I feel like Scott comes at it from one direction and Joe Camden from another. And I don't think that their stories are quite lining up. So I don't know which one, yeah. which one is reality. Right. Um, okay. Well, I will send you a copy of that email also, because that does have a really complete explanation, but I'm not okay, sure. That would be great. And then I could, I'm not sure. It, that one may be, have a point of view also, but at least it's got a lot of info in it. Yeah. Yep. Sounds good. Well, I see Josh yawning, so I think that means... <laughs> I think that means it's getting late. But it's not really that All late. Right. 7.47. And seeing no other thoughts or comments, I think we can adjourn there. Sounds good. Okay. Good for you, Lori. Sure. I'm good with that. Okay. Have a good night. Thank you. You too. You too. Good night. Thank you.